Hello, and today we're going to create, well, we're going to improve upon the Minecraft basic uh, tutorial game. So, uh, the player, as you can see here, is having a bit of an issue where he isn't responding to collisions properly. Uh, you can see this here. If you dump, you end up going through the ground. So to start off, we're going to add a colour to the top of this sprite. So this can be anything, let's say a darker shade of grey. Uh, we're then going to detect this using a touching colour block in the player sprite. We're now going to set the colours to match the colour at the top of the player sprite and the colour of the other things we made already over there. So, the brown and the grey. Hang on a second. We could just uh, make it so uh, it's going to move. We, we've already set the direction to zero when we're jumping, so all we need to do is really uh, just increase the touching colours things that are already there in the W sprite in order to get the collisions to work properly. Now we've done that, create a new sprite, uh, just have a kind of cube or make a kind of pig up if you want and uh, this will be a, the first entity sprite we're going to make. These sprites will well just be non-player characters which respond by themselves some of these are going to be hostile like you can make that one a zombie if you want but to begin with just uh, add a position block uh, make it go to well pick random minus 240 to 240 and uh, that will make it so it's going to go to a random position then we're going to just create a clone of this sprite but we'll uh, make sure we pick, put a pick random block into there so it's randomized whether it's going to create a clone or not after that just make sure you wait three seconds in order to slow down uh, the sprite we don't really want to see uh, this uh, thing create the clones, we just want to see the clones themselves appear. We will now want to make sure that the sprites are affected by gravity properly, uh, so just change it by whatever the gravity is in here, I think it's minus 5, so change it by minus 5. Did I just notice a stray if block there? Get rid of that. We'll now show the sprite once uh, it's landed on the floor. The collisions won't work properly unless we set the ghost effect to 99 and show the sprite whilst it is dropping to the ground. This should now work, hopefully. Make sure you clear the graphics at the end of it, of course. As you can see, that now created a lot of clones. And, it look and they appeared this time. That's one. We just changed the randomness, and now it looks a bit better. We're now going to make sure that the set, that the sprite is now going to go in a random direction either way. So we're going to pick random zero to ten, of course, and point in my direction, then move ten steps. As you can see, that makes the entities move about, but not being affected by gravity which obviously should not be the case. Now we're just going to put a forever loop in there and make sure we uh, don't set go to 99 uh, when we, well, normally as we don't want it to keep on resetting every time the player, well, the new entity falls. Now we're just going to add collisions to the entity, so just drag over the if touching color block and well, for never to start it as a clone instead of uh, the message, and it should begin to work at least when you restart the game next. Well, now we're just going to make sure the entity will jump so it isn't stuck in one place forever, and uh, after that, we'll just make sure it keeps on moving uh, when the player will jump, well, when the entity rather will jump. 
we're now just going to check whether the player, well, the block indicator has reached the sprite, well, has gone beyond the player's range. This script here basically will just stop the, uh, well, block indicator from going beyond a certain distance. It will do this by checking whether the X position of uh, sprite 3 is uh, less or more than the X position minus 75 or plus 75. Do the same for the Y position. We're now going to make it so the, well, the sprite we just created has well, a way to die. Do this by just checking whether if it's touching, uh, well, sprite 2 and it's, uh, well, F is pressed, it's going to delete this clone. Here I've just adjusted the spawning script, uh, so it's going to be a bit less common so the world doesn't get flooded with these passive mobs. Create a new variable called health. This will be this sprite only. This basically will mean that it only belongs to a, well, the clone sprite. Uh, this will stop, will allow it to detect its own health. Now we'll just replace, uh, well, at the beginning of the script we're going to set health to 10 and change it by minus 1 when it F is pressed instead of deleting this clone. Now we're also going to check whether health is less than zero in order to, well, uh, delete the clone. We'll now just make it look a bit nicer, uh, changing colour a bit when it does that. Uh, put the colour so, well, you can see it change colour. As you can see there, it's now working properly. Here we'll just add a nice death animation. Now we'll just make sure uh, we stop everything else from happening in the clone when well, we create a new clone. We'll now create a new sprite, uh, we, well, duplicate a uh, sprite for and make an enemy sprite. This will be, have ev all the scripts of the first one, we're going to change it so it's going to follow, uh, well, sprite 3, our player. Let's go over to Sprite 2 and steal that script we made earlier. Uh, this will allow us to, well, uh, make it go to it as we already are doing something similar there. So to adjust this, to get rid of the bottom two scripts and change the X position to minus 5 and 5 instead of minus 24 and minus 24. So after that, you should see. Uh, make sure you replace uh, the other ones, you don't want uh, it to be doing both things at the same time. Make sure it points in the correct direction, and now you should see that it's going to try to attack the player. We're now going to stop it from uh, moving if it's already really close to the player. Now let's just make sure the player looks a bit more colourful, so it's, the enemy isn't going to end up bouncing on him due to recognising him as a, well, block. We're now going to add a health system to the player. To do this, uh, just create a new variable called health, this sprite only, so it doesn't conflict with the other one we made. Uh, set it to 20, and uh, now we're just going to, well, add the, well, make it so it's going to change health by minus one every time it touches sprite 5. So after that we're going to add a death animation and it's, this time it's going to just go back to the beginning and I'm going to delete this clone as it's all not already not a clone. Now go to the entity sprites and just copy over the death animation and uh, drop it in the player, get rid of the bit of the end which deletes the clone and uh, stop others in the script. Grab the spawn position and put it at the bottom of the script, set health back to 20. This should now allow the player to be heard. As you can see that's now working. Create a new variable called entities. This will allow us to uh, 
well, detect how many entities there are currently in existence, and we'll make sure we do not have more than six in the world. Now we're just going to make sure we change entities by one in each of the sprites. This is the script that will allow us to make sure that uh, there are only less than six entities in the world. Drag that over to the other sprite, and as you can see, that will now limit it. But make sure in the other sprite you slightly reduce the amount of uh, entities you know, that you have to make sure that the hostile entities will always be able to spawn even if there are already many passive mobs. Make sure that when a clone is deleted, it's going to delete, uh, well, change entities by minus one in both of the sprites. That will now conclude the Easy 2D Minecraft series. Thanks for watching. If you want to subscribe, feel free. It means you will see more videos in the future. And uh, bye.